YouTube! Welcome back to another iteration of Table Cinquecento, everyone's favorite bad deck building and replay series on the internet. It's been a couple of months, but this is the Burst of Destiny edition. Let's jump straight into the replays and begin. The first replay we have for you is Avida. What's that? Who? Megalol? Just wait and see. And we're playing against the meta deck, so here we go. We're gonna start off with a World Legacy Key pitching World Wand, and then we can special summon World armor from our hand here. I'm gonna bring out the Almirage after linking off our World Chalice special from our hand here. Activating the World Chalice, which floats into Lee. Activate really the effect of Lee to add Crown by the World Chalice, the OG Galatea monster. Linking for Lib and then Striker Dragon. Activate Striker Dragon to actually add Boot Sector. We got Guard Dragon to bring back the Guard Dragon into Anima. Moving, move the Striker Dragon into another zone, who then allows us to summon the World Crown here to go into Curious. Curious will then mill a card from our deck, and we're going to send Hallowed Life Barrier. Activate the effect of Curious on your chain to mill three. Floating into a bunch of things, then performing a link summon into Griffin, discarding a card, setting the Hallowed Life Barrier from our de uh, bleh, bleh, grave to our field. Guard Dragon brings back Crowned by War the World Chalice into the M Duck, setting a trap card, World Legacy Bestowal, linking away into Firewall Pass. Is this a good board? I mean, if you're playing meta, if you're playing a tier one deck and you lose to Firewall Pass, you got no one to blame but yourself, all right? Let's see what happens here. I'm gonna start with a Duster and then chain. World Legacy Bestowal. What does this card do? Banish seven World Legacy cards from your graveyard. Add a Cybers from your deck to your hand. And then we're gonna chain Hallowed Life Barrier to make sure that we do not die this turn, adding a Vida Rebuilder of Worlds, which we will get to in a minute. Our opponent will then begin with a Tenki or a Fractal, normal summon the Rescue Cat, floating into Care Ass and uh, Kit. Kit sends a Nerval, Nerval adds a Fractal, Ferrajit special summons the Fractal, Banish two for call, special summoning Bear Brom, special summoning the Keras out the hand here, banishing two, uh, three more into the Doom Eagle for the access code, and then into Shureg, banishing the Firewall, not using Firewall at all, but you know, here we go. The opponent forgot about Life Barrier! It's not games, silly meta sheep doesn't even know how co trap cards work. W. <laughs> Draw for turn. Activate the effect of World Chalice and Graveyard to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. I think that's going to add World Legacy Puppet. And then we're going to special summon Avida, Rebuilder of Worlds. Cannot be normaled or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by there being at least eight or more Link monsters with different names on the field and or in the graveyards. You cannot special other monsters the turn you special this card. This card's special summon cannot be negated. If this card is special summoned, shuffle all other monsters that are banished on the field and in the graves into the deck. Neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this. <laughs> Goodbye, board. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> And setting passing. Nice Tri Brigade Revolt, by the way. Can't even respond to the Avida. All right, our opponent's going to top deck a Keras with no graveyard. Attacks into the Crawler's Spine, which, by the way, is just Maneater Bug. Pops the Keras and passes and suffers death. Any Tri Brigade players right here? They are in shambles. They are molding right now. Replay number two, we have Cyber Darks. With the Cyber Dragon, this is actually just three structure decks. Here we go. Cyber Dragon Core adds a Cyber Dark. We're going to activate Cyber Dark World, which is basically adds a Cyber Dark from your deck with a different name than ones in your grave. And then during your main phase, you can perform an extra normal summon of that Cyber Dark. And then it has some bonus equip spell thing that isn't very relevant right now. Pitching the Claw, getting Cybernetic Horizon. Horizon uh, sends one from our hand uh, and then one from deck, I think. Uh, and then one from extra deck or something, right? Basically, it sets up the Cyber Dark Dragon here. Hertz gets the trigger to add Cyber Dragon, Naxter, Special summoning out the Cyber Dragon, activating the world, performing the extra normal summon, equipping onto the Chimera. And Fortress dragoning away our entire field! Huh? What? Bro, trust me. Activate Spriggan Golgonda, pitch a card into the XE, send a thing, normal summon Destiny guy, no fusion Destiny for us, so instead... Wait, this guy's playing Celestial and... What a terrible deck. All right, we're gonna Dragoon, pop and destroy the Fortress, which does zero damage because it actually original attack of Fortress Dragon is zero, so huh, get your beta dragon, man. We're gonna pass on Dragoon. Wow, Spriggans are crazy. All right, what are we gonna do here? Banish Core from the Graveyard, special Nexter from the deck. Nexter activates the effect, but that gets negated by the Dragon Man, but we have Normal Summon Chimera. 
Chimera on summon activates to discard a card to add Power Bond from deck to the hand. But how are we going to fuse? Cyber Dark Chimera says that add Power Bond from your deck to your hand. You can only use Cyber Monsters as fusion material this turn. And also, once when you fusion summon this turn, you can banish from the graves. Power Bond activate. Banish eight Cyber Darks into Overlow Over Dragon, attacking Dragon Man for 8,800 damage. There's more Cyber Darks! A <laughs> little bit of a different replay here, though, however. This is... I don't know. Do we call this Combo Cyber Dark? I'm not sure what we'd call this. So we're going to do a bunch of Dragoonity plays here. Dragoonity monsters, you see, they have this gimmick where they will equip cards. And Cyber Darks also equip. So they're pretty much the same deck if you think about it, right? If you basically think about it, they're, they're, they're almost identical. The Dragoonities are going to give you a way to spam the field here by essentially looping uh, this Synchro monster here. It's called Barsha. Barsha, when you Synchro Summon it, allows you to equip like all of your Dragoonities, I think, from your graveyard. Boom! All three being equipped here. And then Phalanx, as an example, allows you to uh, Special Summon itself, as well as uh, this one, I guess, as well. Kus. So we're going to make multiple Saryujas here to dig for our combo pieces and set up this board. But then, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Verte. After the setup of the graveyard that we have drawn half of our deck, we're going to uh, summon Barsha. Barsha re-equips four, five mons, five Dragoonini monsters have been equipped to this Barsha. And then we're going to Verte, after making in Ardabir as well, actually. Verte sends Overload Fusion, banishing two from the graveyard, uh, multiples actually, into Cyber Darkness Dragon, who on summon equips Saryuja. Is this a good board? Let's read the Cyber Darkness Dragon. If this card is special summon, tar equip a dragon or machine from your grave. When your opponent activates a card or effect, send one equip card you control to the graveyard, negate and destroy. How many equips is that? Oh, that's five equips. So that's five Omni Negates with a Cyber Darkness Dragon <laughs> in Dragoonity. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool board, my friend. Shoutouts to his opponent who's playing Dragon Maid Plant Cyber Darks. Next replay is Dark Magicians. Well, 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 if it isn't the Dork Magin Man, Magic Man. This is a deck that we get every single table 500 and somehow, some way you guys managed to make it worth showing. And I don't, I don't know how, it's just Dark Magician, but here we go. Making two Link uh, fodders with the uh, Engage onto the field with the Magician Soul who pitches itself to bring back Dark Magician from the graveyard. Uh, then we get to activate Bond between Teacher and Student, which allows us, when we control Dark Magician, special the Dark Magician Girl, and then set a Dark, Magi a dark Magic attack, Burning attack, or etc. from your deck directly. Uh, then we're going to go into Verte, Mascarena, set a bunch, and then Verte send Fusion Destiny. <laughs> To summon Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Finally, the first replay, replay with the boss monster himself. DPE is here. All right, past turn. What next? <gasps> chain material in the draw phase. Activate chain material. Chain the effect of uh, Dark Magic Rod into Secrets of Dark Magic, which allows us to fuse using our graveyard into Dragoon with a card in hand. There's been a bit of a debate in recent months. Do we play DPE? Do we play Dragoon? Which one is better? I don't know. B OCG doesn't play Dragoon because it's banned. TCG has to play the has to play Dragoon instead. I don't know which one's better. Why not play both? Mascarena links away with the Verte into an Apollosa for two monster negates, which we're going to use on the microcoder. Transco Talker gets summoned here, sends a card, Lady Debug is summoned, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer is going to negate, and then pop the Transco Talker, activates the effect to return, links to into Splash Mage. But our last Omni Negate is activated as the Dragon Man has no mercy. Dark Magicians with five negates. Turn one. <laughs> Very cool. The next replay is Dino. If I was to show you this hand, Fossil Dig, Baby Sarasaurus, Over Raptor, Lost World, you'd think this is just an amazing, typical, standard, yeah, Dino hand. This is just Dino. Let's see if it's actually just Dino. We're gonna activate Fossil Dig for Misk, nor uh, activate Lost World, chain the effect of Lost World to the Over Raptor with the Imperm. We had the Misk anyway, even though we searched it. Uh, then we're going to do the standard Dino play of uh, Genocide, which is just killing babies, and then the baby floats into another baby. Pop the baby for the baby. Let's go. Special summoning Scrap Raptor <gasps> into Scrap wi wi Wyvern, who brings back the Raptor. And then the baby floats into an Urabe, by the way. <laughs> into King of the Pharaoh Imps to search for Niall, the Ogdodic Remnant. Okay, pitch Niall to Mill Curse, who can then tribute 
a monster on the field to summon itself and then bring back an Ogdodic monster. On summon, Noya gets to add Snake Lily, which I believe is just a reborn. And then we're gonna synchro into Geomath Mech Magma into Bish Balkan, who on summon fills up the entire field with zero attack Uchizima tokens. We're gonna make Reprodocus target the token underneath and call Reptile. And then we get to link summon into Reptilian Enchilada. Uh, and then we're going to link into an uh, Unchained Abomination. Enchilada then allows us to, if your opponent controls a monster with zero attack, add reptiles with different names from your deck to the hand up to the number of monsters your opponent controls with zero attack. That's five monsters with zero attack, Lost World and the Bish Balkan tokens, adding four reptiles from deck to hand, including two an alligator. Activate. Perform a pal, Swing Cobra, and Lizard Draw. Yeah, we're doing Pendulum combos now. Lizard Draw, and uh, the thing give you the uh, scales to special summon out into Zoha and Toon Alligator, which then link into Alien Shock Trooper. Then we're going to use the effect of uh, the Alien Guy to put a bunch of counters on the field here. Lizard Draw gets a draw. Abomination is chained after a card has been destroyed in the field to pop the Alien Shock Trooper. And then if this card is destroyed, special non-link reptiles with different names from your grave up to the number of monsters your opponent controls with A counters. That's five. So Shock Trooper soul charges into three reptiles and then gets linked into Cosmic Slicer Zerol, who then activates his effect to search an alien. Then we're going to synchro into Hydra. Hydra effect says in on synchro summon, destroy as many monsters your opponent controls with zero attack and then draw one for each. That's five monsters. But we're not going to draw five because we're going to protect with Lost World. Lost World lets you protect by destroying instead. We're going to destroy five dinos from our, from our deck and trigger double Pterodon and baby Sarasaurus to float into Tomazor, a dino wrestler, and crawling dragon number two. <laughs> then we're going to activate this guy's effect to add Pankratops, overlay into Feral Imps, adding another uh, as a Reptilian Kotal, going now to Synchro into the Reptilian Hydra, who then pops all of the opponent's field and then drawing the last five cards in our deck here, Triple offering to the snake deity and double solemn judgment <laughs> and pass turn. All right, let's see how many decks in the game can play through two cards left in deck with double solemn judgment and double offering to the snake deity, which if you don't know what this card does, it's Icarus attack for reptile monsters. That was a very roundabout way to make a Drytron board, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Meltdown into the Alistair, Shock Trooper puts an alien counter on it, seven of them in total, which I think negates it or something. Nadir is activated, we're gonna Judgment that. Ecclesia is summoned, into Verte, activate Invocation, into Mechaba, Mechaba add, and then we're going to Snake Deity, pop both of them. We finally have another card left, and that's Maximus, which uh, on summon is just going to get Offering of the Snake Deity then destroyed, and we're just gonna go ahead and... Make Drag Lubion, apparently, as the last final card in our extra deck and attack for 85 damage. <laughs> this is a dino deck, guys. This is a dino deck. <laughs> this is Final Countdown, which if you don't know what Final Countdown does, it's a regular spell card that says activate, pay 2,000 life points. In 20 turns, you can win the duel. However, this is an FTK. So how are we going to pass 20 turns in, in, a, in, a, in one turn? Well... Let's first do some setup here, which is uh, using normal monsters to spam the field using spell cards as well. The key to this is a card called Treasure Panda here, which is banish up to three spells and traps from your grave face down and then special a normal whose level is equal to the banished one. You just summon a bunch of level one normal monsters by banishing spell cards, not once per turn with the Treasure Panda. And we also need to make sure that we can special summon Black Luster Soldier onto the field, as this allows and enables us to use a card here called Primal Seed. It is a card which says that if you control Black Luster Soldier, you can target two banished cards and add them to your hand. Fun fact, by the way, that includes face downs. So if any of you guys here are sick and tired of your uh, Pot of Desires getting rid of your combo pieces, well... If you tech a little BLS and Primal Seed Engine into your deck, you'll never bought a Pot of Desires badly again. So, we're just gonna keep looping up here and setting setting this, this turn up. And we're gonna link Synchro Summon into Shen Shen here, which is extremely necessary. Because Shen Shen is the effect that when a card from the field is sent to the graveyard, banish it. You can see what's going on with the Primal Seed now. Every time Primal Seed adds two cards from the banish zone because of the Shen Shen, 
it adds another copy of the primal seed and then that always gives you a plus one so you can just basically infinitely just add your entire banished uh, face down pile to your hand and there we are we finally drew the final countdown which is a card, that, as, I, as I've explained, um, allows you to uh, win the duel in 20 turns. But this is a very important part of the combo as well. It is Cold Enchanter. This is just a non-once-per-turn discard a card, increase the attack of uh, a monster in the field by 300. The ability to discard your card as many times as you want in a turn is extremely important. Now, here is part one. We reborned on the Junk Collector. Junk Collector has the quick effect to banish this card on the field and a normal trap in your grave and apply the Banish Trap effect. The trap card that we're applying is Pyro Clock of Destiny. Advance the turn count of one effect that counts turns by one turn. So what we're doing is we're going to Primal Seed, add this back, and then Primal Seed, add it back again. Now that we have Reborn and another Primal Seed in our hand, we can activate the effect of Cold Enchanter. Cold Enchanter discards both the Junk Collector and the Pyro Clock of Destiny, which are now in the graveyard, bypassing the Shen Shen, which we can then Reborn back onto the field to banish the Pyro Clock of Destiny to advance the turn counter. And then we just do it all again with Pyro Seed, and that is an infinite loop. FTK advancing the turn clock counter with final countdown. Very cool. That is Primal Seed final countdown FTK. As you can see here, it's up to like turn three now, and then it just goes on to turn four, and you just keep looping and doing this exact play over and over again until you get to 20 turns and win the duel. They're very, very cool. Next replay is called Fire Sorceress. Anyone know what Fire Sorceress does? Not me. Let's see what happens here. A Neo Space Connector into the Aqua Dolphin, into the Bamboo Sword for Isolde. Remember, chat, there was a certain interaction that we've banned because uh, we're kind of sick and tired of seeing us all day for uh, Armageddon Night, but this is uh, almost kind of the same thing. I'm gonna do a bunch of drawing with the uh, bamboo swords here to set this up into the ready fusion. Of course, the best ready fusion target, no doubt, is Sandwich. Beatrice sends a card. We're gonna uh, Pot of Desires, banish 10 to draw two into Crime and Punishment for Psy Impulse. Tribute a psychic monster. Return all cards in your opponent's hand to the deck, and then they draw three cards. I don't know, like, how this thing is real, but apparently that's just a card. Um, sure. All right, opponent's gonna start the turn with four cards. Then we're gonna stand by phase Beatrice, send the Fire Sorceress. What does Fire Sorceress do? It's a flipped mandatory effect. Select two cards from your hand and b remove them from play to inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent. We're going to activate Reverse Reuse. Target two flip monsters in your graveyard, special them to your opponent's field and face up or face down defense. Special summoning double fire sorceress to our opponent's field and then activating the effect of the embodiment of punishment. During either player's turn, detach one XC material from this card. Change all monsters your opponent controls to face up attack. Flipping double fire sorceress up on your opponent's turn to mandatory pitch two cards out of your own hand. <laughs> It's a really bad hand loop. <laughs> Gotta make sure our opponent isn't playing a rank 4 deck here, because you can't just exit on us or something, but here we go. Fire Sorceress, self-hand loop, semi-OTK. <laughs> Very cool. Next replay is Goki Plants. So we're gonna normal summon Suprex into Twist Cobra for Azolde. Oh boy, the return of Azolde. Ah, we sure do love this combo combo. Gonna send a bunch of equips here to special summon Torn Scale, who's going to send a Phantom Knight into a Boots, and uh, we're just gonna basically set up and do a bunch of things here. But of course, the most important Cherubini target search is uh, Carboneden Dragon, which allows you to banish itself and special summon, I think, a Dragon Vanilla from your deck or something. We're gonna eventually get into our plant engine with the Jasmine here, going to use Lone Fire Blossom multiple times. Yeah, here comes back the Torrent Skin. We're gonna synchro into the Power Tool Dragon who adds an Equip spell, which is Symbol of Heritage, which Symbol of Heritage is basically Monster Reborn if you have three copies of that monster in your graveyard. So usually you go Lone Fire, Lone Fire, Lone Fire, and then you can Symbol of Heritage bring that back. We got Dugares to uh, bring back the Lone Fire once again. We have the Giga, the Giga Plant now advancing onto the field here very slowly. If you uh, recall what Giga Plant is, allows you to uh, summon the Super Alloy Beast Raptinus, which is a monster for Geminis that says all Geminis are treated as effect monsters. Because as you know, Gemini monsters are vanilla monsters until they gain their effect. But because of the fact that we have Raptinus here, Giga Plant can use its effect to reborn a plant not once per turn from the graveyard. Beatrice is also going to send Toon Cannon Soldier. We're gonna Saryuja. Gigaplant brings back Gigaplant, who then brings back Gigaplant. 
Uh, the Rose Dragon gets uh, special summon because of the Black Rose Maiden. Firewall Dragon adds back the Toon Cannon Soldier with specials from her hand. And then we Toon Cannon Soldier. Tribute to burn for 500. Giga Plant effect. Bring back Toon Cannon Soldier. Tribute the Giga Plant. Burn for 500. Other Giga Plant. Bring back Giga Plant. And it's an infinite burn loop with Toon Cannon Soldier using the Giga Plant engine. Very nostalgic, I'll say. Heroes! Technically, the guy who sent in the replay, by the way, is the Trap Tricks player, but this actually ended up being funnier, so get wrecked. All right, we're gonna E for Strata. <laughs> we have a wise man here, by the way. Just wait and see. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do some standard hero plays. Get Skullmeistered on the Shadow Piss. Varus increase, etc., etc., into the Vion. Going to set up a whole board here. Yeah, very cool. We're gonna add the polymerization. <laughs> and uh, Mali gets summoned with the Cross Crusader. We got a Dusted Gold, which, by the way, got reprinted in Duel Links before it got reprinted in uh, TCG, which is hilarious. Adding Dark Calling, we've got the uh, Wonder Driver here. We've got a Fusion into Sunrise. We have Mass Change, we have Dark Calling into Mali Bane. Miracle Fusion for the Ab Zero, who then resets the Poly, who then lets us fuse into a Neos Kluger. It's amazing. Burst of Destiny Table 500. You've made four fusion monsters, turn one, and not a single one of them is Destroy Phoenix. I think you might have missed the mark on something here. Anyway, our opponent is going to normal summon Trap Tricks Mantis. We're going to activate Shade Brigadine. Overlay into Exiton Knight. Chain Mass Change. <laughs> Can't stop Exiton with this field, my guy. <laughs> there goes the entire board, but we have Neos Wise, man. Must be special by sending a face-up elemental uh, hero Neos and one face-up Ubel monster from t uh, to the grave. This card can be destroyed by card effects at the damage step. If this battled an opponent's monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the monster it battled, and then you gain life equal to the defense. Very cool. Uh, how did we summon this? I think one of these guys floated into it or something, right? Huh? Is that? Is that what happened? How did- I actually don't know how we got Wise Man here, but anyway. Malibane gets banished by summoning the Yubel to the field with the Ice Dragon Prison. And then we're gonna make Baguska. <laughs> and then we're gonna put Wise Man to- Did you catch that? He put Wise Man to attack and then it went back to defense. Yeah, apparently Kluger lets you float into the Wise Man. Very cool. All right, we're gonna use uh, Ice Dragon Prison again. Bye-bye, Wise Man. Yeah, no, unfortunately, we didn't get to see him this time. There we go, boys. Trap Tricks Control. And uh, here we are with our- um... <laughs> Or hero deck that played wise man. <laughs> Shoutouts to him. This was just a little bonus. Lyrilusk, a new deck from Synchro Storm. Well, not really new, but you know, got a bunch of support cards in Synchro Storm. Let's see if we're able to uh, do anything cool with it here. We got Cobalt Sparrow, Swallow, and Wagtail, I think is the new one as well. We're gonna put a bunch of monsters onto the field here. Okay, we got a Zodiac Whiptail into the Tiger Mortar, into the Kong. By the way, Galaxy Wave, each time you exceed summon, inflict 500 damage to your opponent into a Borbo. And then we're just going to slap on every XC monster possible into the Vespacito, activating the Bird Sanctuary, where Arf Thou adds another card and another one card, uh, level one from your deck to your hand into the Nightingale. More XC summons being uh, performed, bunch of 500 burns taking part here. And then we're going to use the effect of the Bird Sanctuary to, what, attach all of these monsters from the field onto the Nightingale? Yeah, okay, and then we're gonna Verte Send Polymerization, fusing it away into- Look at those materials go, dude, it's a Nightingale! Nightingale with 6,500 attack now activates the effect to burn for 5,500. <laughs> a five-card combo FTK with Lyralusks. Absolutely unplayable. Lyralus replay number two. Our opponent's going to go with a humble dragon pass. Yes, very respectable. Activate Pot of Extravagance. He's going to negate and destroy. We're going to normal summon Warbler into the Swallow for the Where Art Thou for the Jester Confident into the Evil Thorn. Summoning two level ones, combining all five level one monsters into Nightingale. Activating Psychic Blade on Nightingale. And we're going to attack directly uh, five times for 2,800. <laughs> It's so shit. It's so bad. <laughs> Pendulum! Pendulum the best deck. What can Pendulum do? All right, here we go. We're going to activate Pen Call, pitching Scythe, and then go for Wisdom Eye. Activate Wisdom Eye on both scales, then activate Wisdom Eye. Wisdom Eye scale effect cannot be destroyed when you have Pendulum Call having resolved. So what we do is that on resolution, we activate Wisdom Eye to then try and destroy it to set from deck. Well, activate a scale from deck. But because pen call is active, we can't do that. 
So we're just gonna try again on resolution because maybe it'll definitely work this time. Which it doesn't. So we keep activating Wisdom Eye on YGO Pro until our opponent gets bored, calls us a slur, or and leaves the leaves the room. Pan bus deck, baby, let's go! <laughs> Actual Pendulum replay that we have here. We got Pot of Prosperity in Pendulum, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, is that adding the Purple Poison? Going to go for the Dragon Shrine. Non-ironically, by the way, sending Red Eyes Black Dragon, as well as the Effect Monster. Just pay attention to that, by the way. Dual Alliance is also here. We got the Scales of the Chrono and the Purple. We're going to Pen Summon four monsters. We're going to pop the Scales with the uh, Wizard. And uh, we're going to summon with the Harmonizing Magician, the uh, Performa Pal 5 Rainbow Magician. <laughs> Uh, we got black. We got black garden with the garden rose maiden and the reprodocus. All right, we're not doing very triff gaming plays here. I don't know about negates chat, but uh, here's a new card. It's Cupid Pitch. It's the first time we've seen this today. It's a level four generic synchro, which gets used to go into desk bot jet. <laughs> <laughs> she adds creation resonator, which is uh, you can just special summon it if you control uh synchro, right? And then we're gonna go into red eyes flare metal dragon. Which we can detach to, yes. Remember that red eyes we sent with Dragon Shrine? Yeah, it's relevant, trust me. Alright, and then we're going to uh, perform a... Uh, we're going to go into Link Spider into Geonator Transverser. Geonator Transverser swaps the arrows of two monsters on the field. So we're going to give our opponent Red Eyes Flare Metal. So Flare Metal reads, each time your opponent activates a card or effect, you inflict 500 to your opponent and immediately uh, after it resolves. Because of that, Beals has an effect that if you take damage, you can gain attack to that damage taken and then activate to gain 500 attack. So because you take damage, you gain attack, but that triggers Red Eyes to deal 500, which then triggers Beals, which then triggers Red Eyes, which then triggers Beals, which then triggers Red Eyes. And we have given our opponent the wrong monster here and self TK'd ourselves with Beals, Red Eyes, FTK. Self TK. All right, this is a replay. <laughs> okay, so we've got Normal Summon Deep Sea Diva into Neptibus. Are we playing Mermel? Oh no, we're summoning Goyo Guardian. Okay, sorry, Goyo Defender, which uh, lets you special summon another Goyo Defender from your extra deck. One of the cards that was murdered by Master 04, but he's back! And he's relevant again, trust me, look at him. Okay, so uh, a bunch of Phantom Knight plays here. Carbon Eden summons Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon from the deck, by the way. That's what Carbon Eden just did there. And then we're going to summon Brave Eyes, I think it was a contact feature, Brave Eyes Pendulum Dragon. What is Brave Eyes Pendulum Dragon? When this is fusion, summon change the attack of all monsters your opponent controls to zero. For the rest of this turn, the monsters can't attack. The main effect is negate the activated effects of monsters with zero attack. Brave Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Okay, all right. How are we going to uh, manifest this into a viable board here? Well, let's see. First, we're going to do a. Uh, yep, yeah, there's an Apollosa into the Arborea for some Link Fodder into the Virus Swordsman Shade Brigadine. Overlaying into Reptilian Kotal, uh, searching Reptilian Kotal into the verse, uh, back into the Virus Berserker, Synchro Summoning Reptilian Mel Melusini. Okay. Okay, then we're gonna pass turn. Why is this relevant? Well, you see, once per chain, when your opponent activates a monster effect, change its attack to zero. Brave Eyes negates the, the effects of all monsters with zero attack. All right, activate Sephir, search a dragon, go into Striker Dragon, which activates effect to search a boot sector. Reptilian puts it to zero attack, which negates the effect because of uh, Brave Eyes. So we're just gonna have to seal pass. And then we're gonna go into the Cobra. All right, let's try and finish this up here. Can we go for game? Is that a rare fish? All right, go to attack mode here. Battle phase, activate the effect of Heratic Seal. But how much attack does Heratic Seal have? It has zero! Brave Eyes Pendulum. Don't say brave when you actually mean racist. This replay is called sex. How? How do we do this? All right, let's take a look. So we got Baron de Fleur. Got some typical standard uh, Sword Soul stuff hap uh, happening here. Chi Shao and Baroness, I think, are just Omni Negates, basically, right? There's the Reborn into Taya, making a drag out as well, and passing turn. So, we're gonna Kaiju the Baroness. We're going to Imperm to bait out one more Negate. We're gonna Cards of Consonants here. Draw two, out of Blue Eyes. Upstart. Here's another trade in. We're gonna Allure, banish the Kaiju, trade in once again into the boy. Sky Striker, engage, add Widow Anchor, draw a card. For the token, normal summon the mag the, the the this guy into the magis. Here's the 
Here's Kagari adding back Engage. Bunch of cards in our hand here, uh, in our grave. Spells here, rather. I can't speak. Widow Anchor onto the Chi Shao, which gets negated. Stealing it into Chaos Space for the Baby Dragon. Absoruter adds. Gonna special summon the Baby into Striker, who's going to trigger and add a Boot Sector. I'm gonna do a bunch of Dragon plays here. All right, here we go. Paladin, Underclock, Taker for Equimax. Draco, Maximus, boosting the attack. 72, 75. We got Utopia Prime. Putting that down to 490 attack exactly. Avarice into a Flame Swordsman. Slowly getting there with the attack here. Got limiter removal in hand. All right, how 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 is this gonna work? What what do you mean by sex? How is this? How is what what what? Why is why is that funny? Limiter removal attack for sixty nine four twenty damage exactly with the Crusadia Ecomax at thirty five two hundred attack double damage. Nice. How did you actually manage to sit here and calculate this? Like you 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 had to sit here and calculate and figure out how you would make a deck that would exactly do 69, 420 damage. And you figured it out like that. The amount of time and effort, you really can't underestimate it. There you go, chat. There's some sex education for you. We got Svinims with Shadals. Is this a Shadal deck? Kind of, sort of. All right, let's see. We're gonna go into a guy here the the thing and then fuse into the uh, construct into the emz getting ariel at the deck with the wendy sending the reincarnation we got world legacy survivor as well for the trap card adding skomata great uh gravity controller linked off for the construct to add back spells and traps construct sends schism linking into lib adding back the schism lib then sent sets a world legacy awakens and we have a shadal board here we have a set el shadal a set Schism, a set Puppet, a set True Depths of the World Legacy, and a set World Legacy Awakens. That's an infinite amount of interruptions we have here. And guess what? As a bonus, we're not even going to Winda the opponent. Here we go. Normal Summon Rescue Cat, Special Summoning Kalantosa, and Tribrigade Kit, which again gets linked into Tribrigade Ferrigite. Kit sends Nerval to add a Keras. Activate Ferrigite to Special the Fractal. And then we're going to Schism into the Al Capone. To negate the Fractal, so that's response number one, we have Triple Talents, which is going to try and attempt to steal. We're going to immediately Synchro Summon with the World Legacy Awakens. Al Capone triggers, discards the Aerial, which is a Banish for three to remove all of the Beast and Beast Warriors from the graveyard here. But we still have Keras Pitch, and now we're going to activate the effect of World Legacy Secrets, who then sends uh, Specials Constructs, which then sends Wendy, who then triggers Wendy, Special Summoning Squamata, which we then flip up on our opponent's turn with World Legacy Pawns. Squamata flips and destroys a monster on the field. We're going to pop the Keras. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had five disruptions with Shadal not involving Winda. You see, you people complain about how bad and necessary Winda is when, huh, Guess what? We don't even need Winda. You can just disrupt your opponent the normal way instead of summoning a Floodgate. This Shurig isn't really going to do much. Uh, we got E-Telly as well, a Psy Reflector. Look at how, what, how, how many like cards are in here, buddy. How many cards are in here? There's a Magic Dragon as well, just because we can. Yeah, and then we're just going to wrap it up and end the duel here. World Legacy Shadal, ladies and gentlemen. We got Boral Sword, and yeah, you know where this is going. Oh, Lib shuffles away from the uh, field as well. Yep, yeah, very cool. Shadal Control. Next replay here is Skull Servants. <laughs> Bonus if you saw me and uh, Triff take down Jesse and Triff with uh, Jesse and Sam with this deck, but here we go. We've got Skull Servants versus Mutants. Mutants are going to make the unstoppable, formidable board of uh, Beast Set Pass, but we have Normal Summon White Baking, which we Normal Summon into Link Kribo, who then triggers the White Baking to add to the Skull Servants and allows us to pitch one. Sending the White Prince, who then triggers to send a Skull Servant and then a Lady in White. Because all of the Skull Servant monsters have the effect in the graveyard to be called a Skull Servant, we can use Symbol of Heritage. The Monster Reborn, if you have cards with the same name in the graveyard. He's going to negate with the Beast, but we have, in response, Chain Summoning which allows us to perform three normal summons this turn. So we're going to normal summon Samurai Skull. That gets impermed. Doesn't matter because we have another normal summon of Gozuki into Mezuki. Then we can uh, banish with the Gozuki, I believe, to special summon the Solitaire from our hand. Mezuki brings back White Prince. Tribute to the White Prince for the Unizombie. White Prince triggers again to send a Skull Servant as well as a Lady in White. Unizombie activates the effect to send Mizuki. We're going to link into Halka Fibrax, banishing a bunch to go into King of the Skull Servants, activating the White Mare in the hand to pitch and return a Skull Servant. Oh no, actually to special summon the Lady in White, which then makes the King of the Skull Servants unaffected by uh, card effects. Levier brings back the Mizuki, 
links into five head dragon and attacks for game with King of the Skull Servants. Next replay we've got is Synchrons. A dragon Synchron deck? Kind of, okay. We got Quick Launch for the Rocket Synchron, a normal summon Silver Rocket into Junk Speeder. Very cool, okay. How many Synchrons are we gonna summon from the deck here? <gasps> Five! Stardust Synchron, Flora Synchron, Rocket Synchron, Junk Synchron, Quick Draw Synchron. And right, we're gonna do some madness here. Uh, we're gonna add the arriving uh, miracle card, whatever. Uh, get to special summon the power tool with the uh, Zolkin in the, uh, what's it called? We're going to summon Karakuri Buraibu and then summon Karakuri Spider as well. This interaction with the arriving miracle lets us stack our deck and then draw it. And if it's this one, it specials itself and then specials a dragon from the deck into the uh, Brawl Tor. We've got Cupid Pitch into Desert Locusts. Cupid Pitch adds Beast of the Pharaoh, a 600 defense monster here. Special summoning the Levy near. Uh, then we're going to synchro into X Saber Gotham's and Beast of the Fair is going to keep coming back because if this is sent to the grave as a synchro summon, target level four lower zombie in your grave special summon that target that includes itself. Beast of the Pharaoh gives you infinite synchro summons. We're going to haha <laughs> Gotham loop the blue eyes chaos max out of his hand. Stop saying it. He's not playing it. Literally not playing it anymore. Shooting Riser Dragon is Synchro Summon, which then brings back Beast of the Pharaoh, which we can then Synchro for nine into Cloud Castle, who brings back <laughs> Gotham. Activate Gotham's again. Loop one more card out of the hand here. Going into a Stardust and the Beast of the Pharaoh, synchroing with the power tool here, adding the DDR pitching, bringing back Fleur Synchron, going into another Cloud Castle, who then brings back <laughs> Gotham, pitching another card out of the hand here into the Shooting Riser, into the Baron de Fleur, into the Beast of the Pharaoh, and passing on our opponent's turn here. Okay, trade then. Negate. Pass. Very, very, very bad board. I'm not going to lie. Three card hand loop with the. Uh, I, th I think it's two negates, right? So Baron, and then I think Shooting Majestics are, is like uh, when your opponent activates a card effect, banish this card, and then negate and uh, banish that card. So then they really only have like one card left to play with. And I guess if it's Tour Guide, it's Tour Guide. Am I right, chat? Synchrons! Varash is the next replay here. We've got some Drytron cards being activated here, uh, synergizing quite well with the Cyber Angels, of course, but we're also playing Cyber Angel Varash, which uh, will come up in just a moment, which we did search with the Ben 10 here. We're going to go into the Geonator Transverser. Oh no, we're doing some silly stuff like that. Shout out to the opponent, by the way. That is a base deck list if you've ever seen one. So we got a bunch of semi-dragon, semi-drytron plays here. The most important thing that just happened is that we linked away this Makura, the Destructor, which is a card that said if this is sent from the monster zone to the grave, you can activate this effect. You can activate one trap card from your hand this turn. Let's see how this goes. So we got special summon BLS and then activate Macrocosmos. Then we have e Telly, special summoning Cyframe Gear Gamma. And then Primal Seeding back the e Telly to special summon a Cyframe uh, Delta. And then Primal Seeding the Primal Seed in the e Telly. So they keep infinitely activating e Telly this turn and adding back with Primal Seed to use that e Telly engine to go into a, uh, another Saryuja. And then Primal Seeding again, once again, just going through all of the Cyframe entire archetype here for free Link Fodder into the Saryuja. Uh, and then Primal Seeding back once again. Here's the setup. Okay, we got Link Karibo, Link Karibo, and Link Karibo. We're going to activate Shien Spy. Shien Spy is a card that simply says target a face-up monster you control and give control of it to your opponent. We're going to give our opponent a Link Karibo. Primal Seed back the Shien Spy. Give our opponent Link Karibo. Primal Seed, give our opponent Link Karibo with the added back Shien Spy. Just going to give our opponent the full board here. Okay, and why is that? Let's see. All right, so we're going to perform a ritual summon of Meteonis Drytron using Varash. This card says, if this card is ritual summoned, destroy as many monsters face up on the field your opponent controls as possible that were specialed from the extra deck and inflict a thousand for each. And if you do that, this can make a second attack during each battle phase. Okay, well, we are going to get 5,000 burn damage here. But then we're going to Primal Seed, return back the Link Rebo and the Primal Seed. And then we're just going to uh, keep looping infinitely the Primal Seed. Now we have the E-Telly into the Hulk for the Primal Seed again. E-Telly, do we still have targets? Oh, we can summon from hand as well from E-Telly. Today I learned, chat. <laughs> Literally today I learned, okay. And here we go. We can just keep doing exactly what we did all over again with the Primal Seed and just pretty much doing everything that we just did again with the fact that Macrocosmos has been on the field banishing our cards that we can then return back with the Primal Seed. Very cool.
Very cool. There we go. The last portion is a 3,000 burn because we only need to give our opponent three at that point for 8k. Varash FTK. All right, we got Wind Witches next. If ever you've seen an FTK, this might be the worst one in the entire history of the game chat. Activate double Dark Room of Nightmare. Now you see what Dark Room of Nightmare does is that each time your opponent takes damage from a card effect, you can inflict 300 to your opponent. Wind Witches synergy, uh, synergy and gimmick is that they all do a little bit of burn damage every time they activate one of their effects or something, right? Like 500. So every time we burn for like a little bit of the Wind Witch thing, we got double Dark Nor of Nightmare who's going to then burn for 600. We also have Ultra Polymerization to fuse into the Crystal Bell, who burns for 400, and then Dark Door for 600 more, and then we can Ultra Poly, bring back the materials, Synchro into the Diamond Bell, and then use the effect to burn, which then triggers the Double Dark Door. That's it. Just a five card Wind Witch FTK. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. It was so bad. <laughs> Witch! Witch! Witch. Pot of Prosperity for six. We're gonna add to our hand here. We're going to add the baby. The baby, terraforming for Lost World. Okay, this is very similar to last time, is it? Okay. Apparently dino cards are the most ignorant combo cards in the entire game. We're actually gonna add pill this time and not float into anything silly. Lost World into the thing, normal summon the Pterodon, and then we get to over after, pop the baby, bring back the baby, trigger the baby, let's go! Scrap Raptor, Link Kribo, Scrap Wyvern, very similar to standard dino combos if you if you want to do that kind of stuff, but we're actually playing Wyvern cards, uh, scrap cards here, like the Golem. Raptor pops the baby, which then floats into another Scrap Raptor. Let's go into Dark End Dragon for the Scrap Chimera. Into the Raptor, overlaying into a 4 material Prime Athmec Alberton, which says detach 4 materials to add any spell uh, or trap from your deck to your hand. We're then going to activate Double Evolution Pill to go into Yellow Dragon Ninja to then overlay into Lancelot, Dark Knight of the Underworld. We're going to activate Verte to then make sure that we can activate effect to trigger the Lancelot. That negates and destroy, uh, negates the Verte actually, doesn't destroy. And then we're gonna Geonator Transversor, the Lost World token and the Lancelot. All right, what's going? What exactly is happening? We're going to activate Link Karibo on our opponent's turn, which then triggers Lancelot to negate and destroy Karibo. Lancelot is a mandatory once per turn during either player's turn when a spell trap or monster is activated. Detach a material to negate the activation. It's a mandatory negate. The first card your opponent activates. Then, on response in resolution, we can activate Witch's Strike. If your opponent negates the normal or special of a monster or the activation of a card effect, destroy all cards your opponent controls and in their hand. So we're going to, on res, destroy their entire hand before they've had a chance to play the game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have two more replays before we get into the grand finale. You know what's coming. All right. He's back again for his third iteration. We have the Super Heavy Samurais as an engine that allow us to basically give us a convenient way to put Yajiro Invader to our opponent's side of the field. Yajiro Invader is a card that says when a monster is special summoned, it moves one zone closer to the zone of which that monster was special summoned destroying in its path the entire column once it arrives. He's coming. So now we're going to activate the effect of Abyss Actor Extras, which then specials itself to this zone. Yajiro Invader moves one zone closer and closer. He's now going to destroy everything in this column. Waking the Dragon was set here, so this is going to trigger the leading la uh, trigger to special summon out of the deck a leading lady. Uh, Yajiro Invader then moves one zone closer and destroys Leading Lady, who on Pawn Destruction allows you to set Abyss Script Abyss-tainment. We're then going to perform a Link Summon into Hyper Director, a Link 1 Abyss Actor Monster. Yajiro Invader moves one zone closer, triggering the effect of the Abyss Entertainment spell card. If this set card in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect and you have a face-up Abyss Actor penned in your extra deck, special any number of Abyss Actor monsters from your deck. Five Abyss Actor monsters, which doesn't trigger a bit, uh, the uh, Yajiro Invader because it only triggers on the one special summon. We're then going to overlay all four monsters into Alberten to add any spell and trap from our deck to our hand, which is going to be a copy of Legacy of the Duelist. Then we're going to activate the effect of Superstar, who then sets an Abyss Tainment from our graveyard. Link Summon into Alsa. Yajiro Invader will then move one zone closer, destroying Alsa and the attainment. Alsa uh, will then add a Earth Monster, I believe, from deck to the hand here. Nekomane King. 
Then we're going to special summon five Abyss Actors from our deck. Afterwards, we're going to set a copy of Rise of the Abyss King Abyss script to our deck, and also making Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief here. Then we're going to make another Ghost Trick of Angel of Mischief here, which is going to Monka W move him one zone closer, destroying in its path the Rise of the Abyss King, which is this one, dude. This one adds Abyss Actor cards from our deck to our hand instead. Ghost Trick cards as well as being added from the Angel of Mischiefs. We're then going to flow into Vespacito, into this zone. Yajiro Invader, he comes closer. He destroys Vespacito, however, lets you float into Leading Lady. Leading Lady, as you know, when it's destroyed, sets an Abyss script from the deck. Link 2 into Dark. Yajiro Invader, Monka W, moves one zone closer. Special summoning five Abyss actors from the deck. Once again... Performing a Link Summon into the Wee Witch, into the Link Karibo here for a Curious. Curious then sends Destiny Board from the deck to the graveyard. Yajiro Invader moves one zone closer. Curious effect, when destroyed, adds back a card from your graveyard, adding the D. We're going to activate the scales here and then perform a Pendulum Summon of two into Ghost Trick Mansion, past turn. We're then going to trigger... The Link Karibo to Special Summon. Yajiro Invader, Monka W, moves closer into this zone, chains the Ghost Trick Reform, adds back the Field Spell, swaps into Dark Sanctuary. Neko Main King destroyed. Neko Main King has an effect during your opponent's turn. When this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card effect, it becomes the end phase. He just ended his opponent turn by triggering the Yajiro Invader that he gave him with the Super Heavy Samurais. D then activates, which is adding, place, or placing, during your opponent's end phase, place spirit messages from your hand or deck in your spell and trap zone in the order of final. Alright, here we go. Uh, E. <laughs> Yajiro Invader. Doesn't trigger, because it was summoned in the same column. Hyper Director. Yajiro Invader moves the zone closer. Me Bella Madonna, I think, adds one. And then we're going to do another Pendulum Summon. Popping in the process. Uh, activating the effect of Pure Finesse, the Tactical Trapper, who is on Summon. Banish a trap from your deck. If this card is in its owner's possession, is destroyed. Set one of your banished traps. All right, here we go. Yajiro Invader moves closer, destroys the Tactical Trapper, sets back to the front. Then, pass turn, back to the front, activates in the opponent's draw phase, special summoning Neko Main King. Yajiro Invader. He's got eyes. He moves over. He attacks. Neko Main King is then destroyed by the Yajiro Invader. It now becomes the end phase. During the end phase, Destiny Board activates, special summoning another piece of the spirit message from the deck. On our turn, we get to add back with Legacy of Duelists the... Uh, Tactical Trapper. Then, once again, the Tactical Trapper banishes back to the front from our deck. We get Veilard, which is pretty relevant, uh, but I think it was a cost or something, isn't it? Right? Uh, we then get to set another back to the front. Opponent's draw phase. Neko Main King, Special Summon, Yajiro Invader. Target acquired. Spe destroy the Neko Main King. Goes to the end phase. Destiny Board, once again, putting another letter onto the field. It is time to eat. Or eight, I guess. Legacy of the Lilos, once again, looping with the Trapper into the back to the front. Back to the front in the opponent's draw phase for the Neko Main King. Neko Main King gets destroyed and finally, Destiny Board wins the duel. It is time to Atahed. Final has been spelled using Yajiro Invader, looped with Trapper to back to the front, the Neko Main King, to end the opponent's turn and go to the end phase and spell death. Kind of. Monk W chat, he's coming. All right, one final entry here. <laughs> We've got at the top Gage versus Simo. <laughs> All right, uh, Foolish Burial for Deathbot into Deathbot 3 for Deathbot 2. Deathbot 2 adds Deathbot base. We're gonna machine duplication the Deathbots. Triggering the Deathbot in the graveyard to bring itself back. We're gonna add with the scale here, uh, adding the scales. Deathbot base is made. We got Metal Marcher into this, into the Stardust Drag. <laughs> Gage's signature card. <laughs> into the Deskbot Jet. Uh, then we're going to go into a Deathbot 4. We're gonna scale up Pot of Desires. It's always a treat to see what Nerd Factor banishes. What did he banish? 
Gage. Gage. <laughs> ben summon out Death Bot 9. Uh, it's a red dog pass with Death Bot base. Simo's going to top Pot of Desires into a Whirlwind and Samoon, I think, right? Uh, and then the Auster brings back a Vanished Blackwing, Synchro into the, uh, <laughs> this guy stealing the Red Ox into Hawk the Joe, and, uh, yep, getting OTK'd by, by Sivo. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is time on the round. Freeze play, boys. We have just gone through every replay that you've set. 160. Try to enter. But unfortunately, only 25 of you were able to, uh, to make it. So it's time to pick a winner. Table 500 winner for bold format. Oh, just as a alert or whatever to the future. Um, a lot of people sometimes still don't read the poster. <laughs> but if you are going to send a replay in for future Table 500s, which I won't be accepting after this video, it'll be, you know, next time an announcement is put out, which you will always find through my Discord channel and my Twitter, which I recommend you following, links are in the description. Usually the rules are very simple, one replay per person, has to be TCG legal. I'll make very few exceptions as if, it's, if it's extremely funny, like the Yajura one, for example, used Dark, which is technically not legal yet. They have to be TCG legal, not solo mode, not dueling book, and uh, not scripted, unless of course, you know, at least give it the illusion that it's not scripted, you know, if it's a very obvious you've just like stacked your hand in like the, the, the test hand settings, then that's obviously not very uh, entertaining. But, you know, at least try and make it look like it's a real duel, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, the winner for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Really, chat? You voted for sex? The Crusadia Equimax attacking for 69,420. That, that really... This has to prove that my Twitch chat is an average age of 10 years old. Like, th I th this must be actual proof that the average Farfa viewer is legitimately 10 years old. That you all voted for sex? That is what you thought was the funniest replay? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, congratulations, sex. Equimax 69420 damage OTK wins. Coming in at a second place is Gage versus Simu, and uh, in third is Yajiro Invader. Congratulations. You receive absolutely nothing as a reward except Farfa looking into the camera and saying, Poyo. <laughs>